Okay, what we're doing today is uh, we're going to review type one, two, and three. We're going to have uh, students come up and be the teacher. And so Daniel's going to be the first teacher. <coughs> I'm the first one. Okay. So, M, G, and O. We first have to look at the chart because this is, these are both, this one is a metal and this one's a non-metal. So you have to look at the chart. What does that mean when one is a metal and one's a non-metal? Uh, it means that they're ionic. Yes. So, M, G is on the, the second row. So that means it's a plus two charge. And oxygen is on the 16th row, so it's a minus two charge. Since they're both, since they both equal to zero, you don't really need to add any more. They're as good as they are. Okay. And their name would be magnesium oxide. And why do you say oxide? Um, because all binary compounds end in ID. That's really nice. Everybody hear that? Now, I'm going to save you some time. If you had a test, and you will, when you have a test on this, I'd like to save you a huge amount of time. Huge. Did he need to figure out the charges on an always metal? If it's a, top, if it's a type 1, does he have to take the time to figure out the charge on magnesium? Or could you just say what? Just walk up there and tell me what the name of that is. Oh, uh, yes. Right. Does everybody see that? So to save some time, if it's an always metal, we don't have to take that extra amount of effort and figure out the charge on it because they're always the same charge. So you'll never use a Roman numeral with an always metal, right? But you did a great job. You did a great job there. Just uh, to save you some time, you don't have to do that with an always metal. Good job. Next. <coughs> yes, Blaine. <coughs> Sometimes I made a mistake. We try to learn from it. And, and so far, you guys are doing great. Yeah, I'm going to do this one. Okay. <clears throat> so the charge on oxygen is minus two. So, and then a num like six is the number that they both can evenly go into. So it means this one would be plus three. So it would be. <clears throat> Tell me one more thing. How did you know that was plus three? Because you have to like get the same number, like six. What does that mean? Say it again, in other words. Like they have to both evenly go into six, like. What number are you talking about? Like. If you put a minus two there, and then all of a sudden you put plus three, how'd you do that? Um, well, this has three, and so to equal six, you would have to do a minus two charge. Uh -huh. And okay. then for two. Right, over there where it says O3, oh, each option is minus two and you have three of them, put a little minus six above that minus two. So the total is minus six there, isn't it? Right? Each option is minus two and you have three of them. So what does the total have to be on the left side? Six. <clears throat> put a little plus six up there. <clears throat> so then you had to say two times what equals plus six, right? Okay, I got that. All right, I like that. Now, are you ready to name it though? Mm -hmm. So it would be iron. And then Roman numeral three oxide. I am impressed. And why did you say oxide? Because like all binary compounds have been in the ID. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Ooh, that, that was not an easy one. You could have picked number two. That was easier. All right, who's next? All right. <coughs> Impressive, go. <coughs> you can take anything you want. But you still have to teach it. <coughs> So calcium um, is C A, okay. and then bromine is B R or bromide. So calcium is a charge of plus two because it's an always metal and it's in the, like the. It's in the second column, isn't it? Yeah. And then bromine has a charge of negative one. So you would have to like cancel them out. Or, you know, like make them both two. So all compounds have a net charge of what? Zero. Zero. So you would have to have two bromines. So that would be C, A, 
the orange too. Wow. You guys are forming. This is great. Great. Alright, very good. This one, it this would one? be the potassium. Okay. Um, potassium is K. And then hydroxide is OH. And she knew that because it was one of those uh, flashcards, wasn't it? <coughs> it's a polyatomic ion. <coughs> okay, now what? And then the potassium is plus one. Yep. And then OH is. Is that minus one? Uh, minus one. And then you don't have to do anything because it cancels out. That's it. Everybody get that? <clears throat> now, one thing that um, I would tell you that of all the polyatomic ions you had to learn, there was two of them that somebody should have slapped somebody in the face and said, why did you name a polyatomic ion and make it end in IDE? <clears throat> because that's confusing. Because notice, let me ask you this question. Is KOH a binary compound? <clears throat> Everybody, what do you think? Is KOH a binary compound? How many people say yes? How many, how many people say no? Okay, I'll have one and two. <laughs> Try it again. Is KOH a binary compound? How many people say yes? How many people say no? Okay. Binary means you only have two elements. How many elements does KOH have? K, O, and H, don't they? So it's not binary. So it contains a polyatomic ion, doesn't it? Now, you have to memorize these, don't you? Eventually, you have to memorize these uh, polyatomic ions. <coughs> but what a shame that somebody who was naming them, he shouldn't have named them, he or she shouldn't have named them as hydroxide because it, it makes you think it's a binary compound, but it's not, is it? That was one of the bad name ones. They could have said hydroxate, but they didn't. <clears throat> All right, doing a good job so far. Now you know we're getting down to the ones that nobody else wanted, so maybe these are a little bit harder. We don't know. We just know they didn't. They didn't want to do them. Um, I'll do calcium phosphate. Actually, um, what are those, like the, I don't even, okay, maybe not that one. I'm not, so you're gonna write calcium? I just don't know those, um. Do you the, know your elements? Do you know what calcium symbol is? I think it slipped my mind. <clears throat> it's in the first two columns. It's in the second column. Uh, CA? Okay. Now, it's not going to be up here. You know why? Uh -huh. If there was only one more element here, it would be calcium phosphide. So what are you going to do when you hear phosphate? Mm, that's a great question. You're going to look on your chart of what? Or your flashcard. Do <coughs> you have your chart? Yeah. Everybody understand that? We know that she had to go to the polyatomic ion chart because it didn't end in IDE, did it? Um, that is... And the good news, somebody else has already uh, named it for you. There you go. P-O... Okay, now it's not three, but put a minus three there. Do you have that three? So that, see my, everybody see my fist? The whole thing called phosphate is minus three. The whole thing is minus three. All right, go ahead. Um... So then, calcium here. is plus two? Yes, you can always metal in it, plus two. <clears throat> now is that gonna work? You have plus two here and minus three here, is that gonna work? Uh, no. So what are you gonna do about it? Um, I'm gonna do 
Oh, if What's the smallest number that two and three go into evenly? Six. So, so how many calciums do you need to make six? Three. Okay, put a three down there. And then right above the plus two, go ahead and put plus six, because each calcium is plus two and you have three of them. There you go. Now all you do is make the other side be minus six. So how are you gonna do that? Um Minus two. How many of these, how many of those fists do you need? How many of those phosphates would you like to have? Six. How many? Six. Each one of them is minus three though. Uh, two. Yes. Now, how do you give yourself two of the fists? <clears throat> how do you give two phosphates? Add two. What is it? Add two. Uh, yes, but uh, it's the only time that parentheses will be used <clears throat> when you write a formula. Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead and put a parentheses around that phosphate thing. Go around it. There you go. Yeah, Put the little two outside the parentheses. Down, no, down low. It's been a math class too much. <clears throat> there you go. Wait, does everybody see that? So <clears throat> we needed two phosphates because each phosphate is minus three, wasn't it? So we needed two. And that's the only time you have to use parentheses like that. All right. What do you think? Did you learn something? Yes. Good. All right, let's go. Next. And one more thing. Yes. Or two more. <clears throat> and again, I think by watching students do this, you, you can learn a lot more if you say, well, y'all, I had that same struggle. And I wasn't sure about that either, right? <clears throat> um. It might help you a little bit. Uh, may, may, just make sure you scan through the uh, periodic table, say, do I know that? That's calcium, that's potassium. So, I'm going to scan through those. All right, which one are you going to do? Um, the copper one. Okay. Okay, so copper is CU. Okay, and then oxide would be O. Okay. <coughs> and then Yes. What does the Roman numeral it's gonna always be mean? Plus one. What the it charge be? on the what? Copper. On the metal. <clears throat> it always means a charge on the metal, right? Alright, now what about oxygen? What are you gonna do there? And then oxygen is minus two. Minus minus two, right? Yeah. Uh, that won't work out though. That won't be zero, does it? What are you gonna do about that? Um, oh, we gotta do it. Next to the copper, you have to put up two. It'd be nice to have two coppers, wouldn't it? So you put two. How are you gonna tell me you have two coppers? Put a two. Okay. Where are you gonna put the two? Right. All right. What do you call those little numbers that are written below the line? What, what's that called? What do you call a math when you do an exponent? Did your, did your math teacher tell you just, did they say the word exponent or did they say the word superscript? Superscript. Have you heard of superscript? Super means above. Guess what these little numbers are called? Subscript. Subscript. Sub means below, doesn't it? All right, what do you think? Is that right? <clears throat> Good job. Good job. One more. <clears throat> you're done, you'll know exactly how to do it. <clears throat> kind of raise, if you don't mind, raise the paper up a little bit. Okay, now tell me one thing you do know. Let's say, I don't know how to do it, but is there anything you do know? You know what PB stands for? Blood. I'll just write that down. What do you think about that? Can we do that? Let me ask the next question. Um, is this compound a binary compound? Yes. How many people say yes? It's a binary compound. Okay. Okay. Ready? How many people say it's not a binary compound? Okay. Let's take a look. PB is one element. 
What's the next element in there? It's important, okay, because you twice you said these are binary and they're not. What, what, what's the next element in there? It's got a big old capital S. What's that? Sulfur. And what, is there another element? Ah, that's three elements, isn't it? So it can't be binary. What's the good news? If it's not binary, what's the good news? It contains a polyatomic ion. Do you have your chart with you? No. Oh, okay, you need that. <clears throat> okay, the good news, if it's not binary, we start thinking about polyatomic ions. <clears throat> See if you can find it. It's called SO4, and we need to know what the name of it is and what the charge is. The sulfate. Yeah. So put lead and then put sulfate, but leave a little space. Does anybody know why I need a little leave a space between lead and sulfate? <clears throat> I didn't need to leave a space uh, for calcium phosphate. Why do I need to leave a little space between lead and phosphate and sulfate? Let me see how much how wasted are they? Say it again. Right, for a Roman numeral. Why would I need a Roman numeral for this one when I didn't need a Roman numeral for calcium phosphate? Come on, make that connection, okay? Make the connection. Why did I not have a Roman numeral for calcium phosphate, but I will need a Roman numeral for lead sulfate? Yes. Calcium is an always metal. We never use a Roman numeral, right? <clears throat> but there's more than one kind of lead sulfate, so we have to say which one it is. Okay, put the charge right above SO4. Can you put the charge on sulfate right above there? What is the charge for sulfate? Negative two. Okay, put that yeah. up there. <clears throat> and right above the SO4. Not there, put it up. Well, you can put it there, but I, I usually put it inside the parentheses. Okay. And, and that's okay. Now, <clears throat> if each sulfate's minus two, how many sulfates are in there? This is important. How many sulfates are in this compound? How many, look, look at my fist. How many sulfates are in this compound? Everybody. Uh oh. All right. Uh, dang it. Okay, everybody, look up here. <clears throat> Um, how many how many sulfates are in this compound? Everybody, look up there. What do you think? Sulfates are thing in parentheses, right? How many sulfates are in here? This is important. Take a guess. Okay, take a guess. What here? This is sulfate, right? One. But what's that little two mean? Two. There are two sulfates, aren't there? So if each sulfate each right, sulfate's minus two, and you have two of them, then what's the total negative charge here? What's the total negative charge? Negative four. Put a little minus four above that SO4. Up a little higher, yep. Now, if all compounds have to have a net charge of zero, and that side is minus four, then what does the lead have to be? Minus four. Go ahead. A little plus four above the lead. And now we can solve the problem, didn't we? So if it's an always metal, we don't have to do too much extra. But if it's not an always metal, we do have to take a little extra step to figure out what the charge on the metal is. <clears throat> okay, now it happens, this happens, the uh, Romans are kind of weird how they do this. They had a, uh, a capital I for one, a capital two capital I for two, three capital I for three. Anybody know what Roman numeral four is? All right, it's IV. So they put a one in front of five, meaning subtract one from five. That's kind of weird, isn't it? All right, what do you think? What do you think? Okay, so here's what I have for you. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna do something uh, kind of unusual. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna give you a quiz on polyatomic ions on Monday, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the quiz right now, and you're gonna you're gonna be able to see it. You'll know exactly what it looks like. You'll know exactly, you'll know exactly what it looks like, and I'm gonna tell you that I'll give you I'm gonna give you a quiz on these polyatomic ions on Monday. Okay? So here is the actual quiz. Now I will give you a new blank one on Monday. I'll give you a new blank one. Get it? Now, the reason I do that is, and I have some other games. I have a couple of games you can 
pray to learn these. Um, I'm, I'm assuming, and uh, I know that not all of you, but I'm assuming that you know most of the elements on the periodic table. If not, that's something you need to go home and say, and I really don't use all of those, do I? You think I'm gonna probably use uh, thulium? I'm, I'm not gonna use those. So there's probably about maybe uh, 30 elements that I tend to use most of the time, you get it? And you know, you can almost tell which ones I'm gonna use. So make sure you know your elements, number one. But the next thing is, if you don't know your polyatomic ions, then we can't write some of the other compounds, can we? So uh, we're gonna play, I'm gonna try to show you, number one, today I'm gonna show you a, a, a way you might, that might help you to try to memorize it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna reteach, uh, I'm, I'm gonna teach you uh, type four and type five, which is easier, they're actually easier. Okay, so here we go. Oh, I'm sorry, I have another thing for you, sorry. Uh, the second assignment I have for you, now this one um, is also due on Monday, okay? And I know you could probably do it tonight if you wanted to, but if you're busy, um, I got this online, and, and it's really kind of weird. I know we don't give these kind of assignments, but I thought it was really kind of cute. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, Mole Day was actually in October, but uh, what you do is, it has a whole bunch of polyatomic ions in there, but they have the charges missing. They didn't put the charges on there like some of you did on your flashcards. But anyway, what you're gonna do is you're gonna color these and it says if it's, a, if it's a plus two charge, you make it green. If it's a minus one, you make it blue. And so when you get done, uh, it should make a little picture, and I, it's not that hard to know what the picture is, but I thought it was kind of interesting because it's gonna force you to say, hey, what's the charge on that? What's the charge on that? So I'm gonna try to help you as much as I can to learn these things called polyatomic ions. Okay, now, um, I, I was very impressed. Uh, thank you very much for coming up here. Your willingness to come up here and, did somebody leave a pencil? Okay, all right. Uh, thanks for your willingness to come up here and, and try to work these out. This right here, if you understood all these, you're in pretty good shape with type one, type two, and type three, you get that? You're in, you're in pretty good shape. Now what you can do, if you look right here, <clears throat> see this shape, um, see this sheet right here? <clears throat> Your homework, we're not doing the odd questions in this chapter, we're doing this packet, aren't we? Now we could go through here <clears throat> and um, I could just pick some at random, we could do a few right now today, but this is what you should do at home. Now, now for example, let's say I'm gonna do number nine. Let's pretend we're gonna do number nine, okay? And you don't have to pretend because you can actually get number nine out if you want. And the first thing I noticed is, I know I'm gonna write zinc. <clears throat> now, I also noticed that this is not binary. Now, if it's not binary, it contains a polyatomic ion. So I go up here and I look for it. Let's go look for it. Da -da 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 -da. There he is. Everybody see it? So what is the name of NO3? What's the name of NO3? Now, <clears throat> the question is, do I need to spend some extra time and trying to put a Roman numeral in here? That's the only thing I have to figure out. Do I need to spend the extra time to put a Roman numeral here or am I done? All right, help me out. Which one? Do I need to spend extra time to find the Roman numeral or am I done? Which metals do you never use Roman numerals for? Always metals, right? What are the always metals again? <clears throat> group one, you're always plus one. <clears throat> group two, you're always plus two. And then what's the other one? Silver, zinc, aluminum. Plus one, plus two, plus three. <clears throat> Can you remember that? So do I need to have a Roman numeral with zinc? No, I'm done. All right, let's do another one. Let's go right here, 43. Everybody go to 43. Okay, I know I'm gonna write copper, <clears throat> but this is not binary, is it? It's got, this is not two elements, is it? And so I'm gonna look for a polyatomic ion. Let's go find that guy, find PO4. Hey, doo -doo, doo -doo -doo -doo. There you are, I found you. And <clears throat> I'm gonna put phosphate here, because you never change the name. Um, 
of polyatomic ion. Now, do I need to spend some extra time and find the Roman numeral for this guy? I do. How'd you know that? Excellent, excellent. <clears throat> Everybody get it? Okay, so here's what we do. Ready? What's the charge on phosphate? We go up here, and what is the charge on phosphate? Everybody look up here. What's the charge on phosphate? Minus three. But how many do I have? <clears throat> how many phosphates do I have? Look, we got a number. See that number right there? Uh-oh. How many phosphates do I have? Two. Each phosphate's minus three, and you have two of them? That means minus six, doesn't it? Now, if this part here is minus six, this plus here, over here has to be plus six, doesn't it? Now, two, I'm sorry, three times what number gives you plus six? What's the charge on the copper going to be? Layla, what do you think? What is it? Two. two. And that, what's the Roman numeral? The Roman numeral is always the charge on the metal. The charge on this metal is plus two, isn't it? All right, let's pick another random one. <clears throat> um, uh, I don't know. How about uh, this one? 37. <clears throat> All right. Let's go down the road. Let's do this, okay? Uh, down you start and pick a random one on here and say, I'm going to do this one. And which one do you want to do? Uh, 30. 30? Okay, let's everybody go to 30. And what do you have for that one? <clears throat> oh, um, <clears throat> And notice it's not, yes, yeah, not binary, so we had to look up here, didn't he? What is it? All right, now I have, I have an, a question for you, Daniel. Do you need to spend extra time looking uh, for the Roman numeral? No. Why not? Because it's an odd metal. Everybody get that? I'm done, aren't I? <clears throat> There's only one kind of lithium hydroxide. I don't have to have Roman numeral. All right, go ahead. So, 23. 26? Oh, that's an easy one. Ah, all right, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm glad you at least learned that um, I can, I can, I know patterns. <clears throat> all right, Zach, pick one. Any There's a bunch of them. Okay. And that's what you should do. Which one? Wait, 26? We did that one. Yeah. You got a whole bunch to pick from. A whole bunch. Uh, 11. Okay, 11. Let's go to 11. All right, go. So, calcium and calcium and carbonate? Yes. Now, I got a big question for you. Do we need to spend some extra time and put a Roman numeral with that calcium? No. Why? Wow, everybody get this? You know, the more we do that, the more you said, I got that now. I got that down. All right, Delaney, pick one, random. Which one? 40. Okay, 40. So barium. Barium. Sulfide. Now, be careful. Is it sulfide, sulfite, or sulfate? Sulfite. Fight. Everybody see that? <coughs> that? So this is sulfite which is very close to sulfate, isn't it? Now, do I need to spend more time, though, with the, to find the Roman numeral? Mm -hmm. Because it's an always metal. All right, here we go. May. Uh, 36. 36 or 26? 26. 26. Wait, that's the third time. All right, uh, there's a whole bunch of these, a whole bunch to pick. We, how about, would you like to try... Um, you want to try number 44? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. And then O-H is Okay. Now, do we need to spend some extra time trying to find the Roman numeral? <clears throat> uh, what? Yes. Yes, because it's not an always middle, isn't it? Okay, so... Tell me right here, here, May, what's the charge on this uh, hydroxide thing? Um, yes. And all compounds have to be zero, so what's the charge on the nickel? Plus one? Plus 
Yes? If this is plus one, this is minus one, that'll be zero, wouldn't it? So what are gonna what Roman numeral are we gonna put here? Yes. <clears throat> yes? All right. Layla, pick a random one. It's a random one, all right? Or I'll pick it for you. Either one. Seventeen. Seventeen. All right, let's do that one. I like that one. Magnesium <clears throat> sulfate. All right, what about a Roman numeral? Why not? Are we getting that? All right, last one. One more. 21. 21. We're okay. All right, we can do that. 21, go. Um, what about a Roman numeral? Everybody see that? <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> now we're going to switch gears. <clears throat> we're going over here. Uh, oh, not that page. Let's find this page right here. All right, everybody see this page? Now, this is a little bit harder. It's a little bit harder. But what we have to do is now, instead of me giving you the formula, you come up with a name, you have to come up with the um, a formula. So I'll do one for you, okay? I'll do one, and uh, then you guys can um, pick in there. Um, there's some of these you won't be able to do because I haven't taught them yet. You can't do that one yet, and uh, you can't do that one yet. Um, so I'll tell you which ones you can't do. Um, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> now, uh, this is a weird one, and I'll do this one first, okay? Ammonium phosphate, ammonium, that's not even a metal. That's not even a metal. So where am I going to find ammonium? I'm looking at you. All right. Where am I going to find ammonium? What is it? on the polyatomic ion chart, isn't it? It's the only polyatomic ion that you might write first because it's plus charge. And so it's called NH4 and it has a plus one charge and that's called ammonium. And I just write it down, ammonium. And then look at this guy here, see, phosphate. I didn't say, it didn't end in IDE. So I look up that also. And I say, well, phosphate, somebody else already named it, but phosphate's PO4 and phosphate has a minus three charge. Now, this is a, some of you are getting very good at this. What are you going to do about something where here's a fist that says plus one, and here's something that says minus three? You said, that can't work. That does not add up to zero. So, do I need more ammoniums or do I need more phosphates? How am I going to make this add up to zero? And I know what's happening in your brain. You see all these other little things. Can I just simplify it for you? Blah, blah, blah is plus one, and blah, blah, blee is minus three. What would you do to make a compound? You say, well, I need three of those. Isn't that right? So all I need is three of these. Now, how do you get three ammoniums? Write it down. If you think you know ahead of time, you write it down. How do I have three ammoniums? I need three, whatever's inside that parentheses. And there it is. Three times plus one is plus three. Plus three minus three. I think I got it. Okay. All right. Somebody, uh, wait, let's start. Uh, Roar will go backwards this time. Roar, pick anyone you want here, except for uh, four and 11. Two? Two? Yeah. Okay, go. Uh-huh. Okay. Is that going to help me at all? Yeah. The iron's plus two, isn't it? You guys are catching on. Look at this. I think you're finished, aren't you? Now, in a real world... In the real world, you wouldn't see the plus and minuses. Uh, they're just there to help you write it. See that? So in the real world, you'll just see F-E-O. Very good. Layla, pick one. Okay. Oh, all right. You can't pick those. You can't. Nine, go. C-U. Okay. Okay, so the Roman numeral means plus two. S. 
Okay, now I'll give you a little clue here. If it had been binary, if it had been only two elements, it would have been a copper two sulfide IDE. But as soon as you see it not ending in IDE, sulfate, where are you gonna look? On the what chart? What's that chart called? Polyatomic ion chart. So find it, find sulfate. SO, sulfate's SO, look again. You did a flashcard. Sulfate's not SO, what is sulfate? Are you looking on the right chart? See, sulfate is what? SO what? Oh, SO4, but what's the charge on sulfate? Minus two, right? See that? So what's gonna happen? What are you gonna do when something's plus two and something's minus two? You say, you know what? I think we're finished. I think I'm finished. And you are. Okay, next one. Which one? Five. Okay, go. Okay. Okay. And that's it? Okay, now we gotta be careful here because um, when you're building a formula, I have to look over here. So what's the charge on calcium? Um, plus two. It's an always metal plus two. What's, uh, what about chlorine? Uh oh, see that can't be a compound. So what are you gonna do about it? Two here or two here? Like that? Okay, so your final answer is CaCl2. That's right, everybody got it? All right, <clears throat> May. Seven. I right, go. And unfortunately, I can't go back in time and 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 hit the person in the head and say, "Why did you name that polyatomic ion IDE?" You shouldn't have. But we have to remember that one, okay? Capital O. H. H. Okay. And so what's the charge in magnesium in a compound? Well, it's going to be the plus three. And what's the charge of this hydroxide? Uh, All right, that's not going to work, is it? How are you going to fix it? Do I need, how many hydroxides would you like? One, two, three, how many would you like? Two. two? How do you do it? Would that do it right there? Would I do it? Would that do it? Would it do it? Yes. But that's two hydrogens. That's not two hydroxides. How do I make two? Oh, you gotta put them in the parentheses. What's it called? Parentheses. Okay. Everybody see that? I didn't need two hydrogens. I needed two what? Two hydroxides. All right, go. Zach. Yeah. Okay, that's actually uh, 14, it got cut off. I right, go. Um, NO, are you guys looking at the same chart as me? You think nitrates oh, NO? NO3. Oh, oh, okay, all right. So nitrates NO3, but what's the charge on nitrate? Uh, minus one. What's the charge on zinc? Uh, plus two. Plus one? Plus three. Two, okay. Well, that's not gonna work. So what are you gonna do about it? I can't get rid of anything because okay, so one zinc by itself is plus two. So you would add another zinc. Another what? Add another zinc. Wait now. Zinc's already ahead. He's plus two and you're minus one. I don't need more pluses. What if I had something like this? What if I said here's a plus two and here's a minus one? And I said, what do you need? Uh, I'm sorry. Hey, give me another minus one. If you give me another minus one, they would add up to zero, wouldn't they? So I need another nitrate. How do I get two nitrates here? Like this, a two here? Ah, but, ah, there we go. So I need two of whatever's inside here, right? Each nitrate's minus one. I have two of them, that's minus two. That works. All right, good. Daniel. Which one's that? That's 10. So it would be PB. Okay, PB. 
But that said lead four chromate. And then it would be, so that would basically mean the charge is plus four. Okay. And then you do parentheses, CR, O, four, minus two. Wait, chromate's minus two. So is that why you want parentheses? Oh, because I need to add another, another one. So we need not one chromate, but what? Two. So parentheses and then two chromate. That'll work. Does everybody see that? You picked a hard one. That was good. Thanks for picking a hard one. All right, Kyle, go. Which one? Eight. Eight? Okay, go. Uh-oh. Last one. Come on. Aluminum? Uh... What's the charge on aluminum? Is it negative two? No, metals are always positive, remember that? So remember, uh, we have plus one, plus two, and then we have plus one, plus two, plus three. So what's aluminum? So sulfate's SO4, right? And it's minus two, uh-oh. What are you gonna do with something's plus three and something's minus two? AL2. Yes? We need three of those, don't we? Okay. Now, here's what I'd like you to do, okay? For home tonight, if you want to look at that quiz, said it's not till Monday, but you're telling me what that quiz is going to look like? Yeah, I am. And what we're going to do is you want to uh, go home with your flashcards. Go home with your flashcards and say, I'm going to learn some of these, and then tomorrow I'll actually show you a way to help you memorize these, all right? Here's my clue number one before you leave. Hang on. Before you leave tonight... Find the ones that end in eight. Phosphate, carbonate, nitrate. If you concentrate on those, I can show you how to memorize most of the other ones. Okay, go home tonight and said, I'm gonna, there are eight of them that end in eight. Find the famous eights.